you're recording. No. All right, I'm the host. There we go. <laughs> now we're recording. This is the regular meeting of the uh, Selectors Advisory Committee on Buildings and Infrastructure. Uh, Monday, December 14, 2020, 8.32 a.m. We just got started, but now we're recording, so we will get underway. First item on the agenda is the minutes of our last meeting on November 9th. And uh, do I have any comments or corrections? I didn't hear any before, so if none, I will. Anyone have to make a motion to approve the minutes? Move. Neil moved and uh, second. Any ration? Discussion? All in favor? Approving the minutes? Aye. All right. Unanimous. Okay, next item on the agenda is comments from the public. This is a virtual meeting by Zoom. Anyone who wants to comment um, uh, may do so by email. And we will read the comments in the course of the meeting. Email should be sent to, I guess, my town email address, kevin.moynihan at ucanct.gov. That brings us to the next item on the agenda of CHP and boiler update. Is that Joe? That's Joe. Good morning. So to, to run through, I'll run through the um, wastewater treatment facility, CHP first. Today we're walking through with the uh, with Eversource's contractor for the installation of the gas main onto the wastewater treatment facility campus. Um, this includes the gas for all the boiler conversions as well. Um, last we spoke, we had uh, two CHP package units. They had been procured. Um, they were in folio map at the contractor's uh, yard. And we are, um, this week, we're gonna be installing two equipment pads where they're gonna live. Uh, the two units will be delivered to the job site next week. Um, Aegis is also wrapping up uh, the fabrication and assembly of the load side, which is the pumps, the heats, the, the um, pumps, controls, heat exchangers in the shop as we speak. Um, and we're still targeting to have the CHP up and running in February. So. Is there any questions regarding the wastewater treatment facility, CHP? Uh, all I, uh, only thing, no questions. Um, just when it's up and running, it'd be great at some point just to have a quick tour, just to, you know, kind of sort of, we've been talking about just to see what it looks like, how it, you always get better understanding of how it's working. Absolutely. That'd be great. We could do that. Um, so, we're always looking for people to tour the wastewater treatment. So <laughs> exactly. I've never Jimmy, been there. I'm Jimmy, glad we Jimmy, gets, Jimmy gets bored down there. <laughs> um, they have a really, tasting too on Fridays if you're interested, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So the uh, SAC CHP and boiler. Um, last we spoke, o OLA had completed the boiler RFP and the town received four bids. Um, we've reviewed the bids and presented them to the Board of Selectmen uh, at the last meeting. And Boiler One was awarded to Allstate Construction for the amount of $227 and uh, 200, I'm sorry, $227,156. Um, the school also took the opportunity to bid the other two boilers for SACs, uh, which are also at the end of their serviceable life. And they received a bid of 341,000, um, which they are going to request that for that funding in their next budget. Um, so you, they have good hard numbers for that. So that was also a benefit of going out to bid. Uh, OLA has completed the review set for the SAC CHP and uh, we are reviewing it internally. So we have a set of drawings that are, are basically a schematic set of drawings just to make sure we're going down the right path with the CHP. And um, a quick, quick review, everything looks as we expected it. Uh, the project will go out to bid late November, uh, I'm sorry, late December, early January with installation over the summer with the CHP um, unit being commissioned prior to the next heating season for the school. Um, 
OLA has obtained the required Eversource forms for the incentives. Dan um, and OLA will be submitting the paperwork and we are anticipating the $60,000 incentive um, that Mark had identified, the MHR had, had identified. Uh, so it's up to $60,000. Um, we were gonna have a walkthrough with Eversource, but Eversource currently is not having in-person meetings for, for walkthroughs for these. So we're just gonna send them pictures of the existing equipment and the plans to try to secure the incentives. So that's really all I have for the SAC CHP and boiler. There's any questions? I have a question, Joe. Why are we delaying yeah. until summertime for installation? Well, I, I don't think we're delaying it. It's just there's the matter of the bid documents being available. Um, there's not really much in the way of savings in those shoulder months. So even if we did get it commissioned at the very end of the heating season, there really wouldn't be much savings. And you also start having to maintain the equipment. It's about, um, I think we're paying about $12,000 a month to maintain the equipment once it's once it's started. So um, there's not really much of a, much of an advantage to running them in the summer if you're not getting the waste heat. So Joe? <clears throat> yes. We're gonna spend $12,000 a month to maintain brand new equipment? Well, I said it's to, to operate and maintain the the brand new equipment. Yes, it will come out of the savings. Okay, one of the things I, I asked, I think last last month, and I would like to ask again, is okay. could we get a complete inventory of all the CHP and solar projects that both the town and the Board of Ed have either completed or initiated or anticipate? And could we then get against that uh, inventory estimated costs versus estimated savings? Because I sure. think that would be, I think that would be important for us in order to get a better handle on, you know, how good uh, this green initiative for the town is really resulting in terms of for the taxpayer. Excellent. Yeah, we actually have that information for the wastewater treatment facility. Mark Robbins um, provided a memo with all the details on the anticipated savings. So I can forward that one over to you right, you know, right after this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll give you a good idea of where we are. The other ones aren't, um, he also, Mark Robbins also did one for the anticipated savings on the, at the SACS project as well for the CHP. Mm -hmm. So I can send you that one. The boilers get a little more tricky. Yep. Um, I don't have all the boiler information. I only have the boiler information for, for what we have um, bid. Right. Uh, the, boilers, the boilers are not part of the, the uh, sustainability initiative. There, there's replacements of things that they're going. I mean, you know, the fact right. that we're more efficient boilers than we might have. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that the, right. For the condensing boilers rather than the boilers that are there that we're going to replace, right? Yeah. But there must be yep. there must be either an implicit cost increase or an implicit cost savings from converting to the new boilers from the old ones. Yes. So yeah, we can certainly give you an analysis showing the differential savings moving from the more efficient boiler and moving from a baseline code compliant to a condensing boiler, which is what you're buying. So we could show you, so that's gonna be a gas savings. Mm -hmm. We have enough data, we have over, uh, the Board of Ed is over a year of gas data right now. Uh, so we could normalize the before and after since they have converted to gas. Um, so we could do that uh, at a high level, but it'd be more interesting to show it pro forma for all three boilers because it sounds like they're going out to bid for you know a total boiler replacement so that'd be easy to model um i haven't seen any of the information that's been submitted to eversource i was expecting to be in the loop in connection with the utility incentives that i had discussed in my memo so i haven't received anything from the board of ed or been in any, any of the meetings with respect to eversource applications so i'd like a chance to loop in and just corroborate that um, and on the, I just wanted to mention that the 12,000 on maintenance costs, that's what we had negotiated for the two CHP units at the treatment plant. That's an annual number. There's probably a 3% escalator on that, but that's an annual maintenance program. Okay. So it's more like a thousand dollars a month. Yes. But oh. we, again, we haven't, I'd like to go through the process of competitively bidding out that CHP system. 
And I think it's important that we integrate that with the projected yield of the solar system uh, because we have signed contracts, Board of Ed has signed contracts for, for a solar system on SACS and there will be on one as West as well. And then the Board of Ed is, as I understand, Dan, you can jump in to do an LED lighting project at SACS. So that'll further reduce the electric. So then it's really interesting, right? So that you've got a multi-phase hit, you're cutting back electric load, <laughs> LEDs, you're solarizing, so you're generating your own power and CHP. So collectively, that'll have a huge elect, uh, impact on the, um, you're looking to say, well, just on the boiler and the CHP system at SACS, the boiler, the CHP, and the solar, forget about the LED lighting project, $100,000 a year in savings projected as of today. Actually, George, I'd like to go back. I misspoke. What I meant was <clears throat> the replacement of the boiler, we, we actually, the savings on sustainability was converting from oil to gas on the boilers we had. And we've converted like six or seven boilers around the various town. Mm -hmm. Board of Ash, actually probably eight or nine by now. So those savings are part of the sustainability initiative. Um, but the replacement of a boiler that was going to have to be replaced anyway, anyway right. there's additional savings going to a, a more efficient condensing boiler, I guess. So, so the, the, whole, the whole analysis is really the conversion from, from oil to gas. Hey, Kevin, where are we on getting uh, gas to west? Are we, is that? That's, with, why we do that the, that's why we're doing the CHP because we, right. we, we agreed with uh, Eversource that if we put together a package of projects, uh, including things like Canaan Parish and the milk conversion of the milk board departments and uh, uh, upgrading really the milk board departments and um, and the CHP projects that we they will they will undertake to bring gas to West School and the 71 or so houses along Ponus Ridge Road from uh, Davenport Ridge and ultimately probably Country School hooking up as well to convert their propane farm to gas. So, so they, do we know when that might happen now? Well, again, we have to we have to deliver on these projects for them to for them to okay. uh, proceed. We have a separate discussion going on with uh, Eversource, as as Tigers mentioned before, to have them do further expansion downtown, and that requires actual customers signing up. But the uh, the basis for the West School is to do enough projects, which were already in motion in some respects, like Canaan Parish, but also CHP, which gives them a lot more gas use justify the economics of doing West West School. Otherwise, they wanted a million dollars. Right, yeah. right. No, no, I knew that. I just said so we've reached that level of project that they'll go there once we complete these. Yes. Well, that's hopefully. Right. Yeah. So uh, another question, in terms of the boilers at Saks, what was the um, cause for the difference in the, the, the price comparisons for the one versus the, the two? One is 220 and two are 340. Right. Did I hear that correctly, Joe? Or two, two, Correct. Two. So there's, so you're asking why two or, or the, the sum of. Um, are they all the same the size? Or? They're, all, they're all the same size. So there's added savings of the, for them doing both at the same time. Okay. So, so George, just to mention the way I would recommend structuring the maintenance contracts, and I'm looking forward to getting getting into this on when we go forward with SACS. But what we did at the treatment plant is the maintenance contracts are hourly, so you pay per run hour. Uh, so if you're offline in the summer, you're theoretically you're not going to be paying a maintenance contract when it's off offline. That's why breaking, for example, 175k unit. And if you haven't met the need to turn it on, it makes sense to break it into two, uh, 235s, for example. So you can just run one. And uh, again, you're paying on the hourly. So um, you know, there's some economics there uh, so, that, so that you can modulate it. Yeah, what, I'm, what I'm really trying to get uh, my head around and my hands around is with all the initiatives that were going on, some by the town, some by the Board of Ed, um, I really want to get them all together in one spot so we can see, okay, how much have we spent and how much have we saved? And what's the status of each of these projects? And, and while I know we talk about each one individually and, and occasionally a, a piecemeal in terms of inside each project, 
I don't think we have a perspective on the entire set of initiatives. And I think that that would be important, especially as we go into budget season for the next fiscal year. Because we're gonna have savings and I wanna know where they are, who's got them and what we're doing with them. Yeah, the important thing is, George, they're long-term savings. Uh, once, we, once we have gas and once we're generating electricity, savings are there uh, long-term and after your payback of mm -hmm. three, four, five, six years, whatever the paybacks are for the. And I, I, I understand that and, and I recognize that, but I, I think it would be good if we, if we, if we knew. The SACS is a great model, you know, because it's kind of a, a it's, it's a virgin site right now where you're going to be converting, you've already converted to gas, so you've got the baseline. So you're going to be doing CHP, you're doing boilers, uh, boiler, purpose-built gas boilers, not the boilers that are there that'll burn anything you put in them, but high efficiency gas boilers and CHP. So those are three measures. So my question for you is, the other thing is, and I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I'd like to, is the lighting and controls conversions. And I believe the Board of Ed has budgeted money for uh, LED lighting and control upgrades. Would you like that to be part of it as well? So that fourth measure, so. Yeah, because that, that speaks to the kind of subsidy we can get from Eversource, right? Right. Because the, there, there are utility can... incentives and there's zero <laughs> financing for five years per meter to pay for those qualified measures. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another thing to keep in mind is since your money is fungible to allocate for school projects, you could think about using that 0% financing to fund uh, things that qualify like building management systems, demand meters, um, energy savings. So the utility will pay you for energy savings measures and on the outside of the building, we're investing through a PPA and CHP on energy generation measures. So those sort of come together, but, but to be able to exploit the utility bonuses is really key. So when you have a project where you haven't done LED lighting and you're looking to do a new BMS system or controls, to be able to package that incentive and get the enhanced utility incentive so if you have a $300,000 lighting project, you could design it so that they're gonna give you 150,000 of, of a cash grant towards it. So then you're down to $150,000 lighting project that'll save you $60,000 a year. And you got a five year payback on that $150,000. It's cash flow positive. You're making money day one from having done it and the savings pay for the loan. So that's sort of the, that's an opportunity, and SACS is a great opportunity. And then, if you know, if you have a great model there, you can replicate that at the high school, for example. Well, speaking of that, is the high school project going to be in the budget, Dan? For the roof? I'm sorry, for the LED? No, no, for the CHP. The CHP, right? That's going to be presented on for next summer's budget, correct? And how, and what? Um, how are we how are we estimating the cost of that based upon what we've learned with uh, SACS and wastewater treatment plant? Well, we'll work with OLA to develop what that should be. Because I think we were talking about a million dollars as a budget or something. Correct, we, right. It seems like a lot more money than it has to be. Unless you're talking about boilers as well. So we'll wait to, we'll wait has the lighting to project been scoped out yet at SACS? So we've completed uh, putting the specs together and the bid docs for uh, SACS. We're working on the high school now. All right, I can help you look at the lighting project as well. So that, so it, again, like that, so I mentioned in the memo this summer that while that <coughs> boiler is more expensive, we went from 40 to 60,000 in incentives to, to pay for the difference. The same thing happens in the lighting world. So there's there's some there's an art to it, you know the the measures that you choose to present and how you um, package that. But you can exploit incentives right now to cover a lighting project uh, up to seventy percent of the project cost. Right, and I think I you've heard us talk about the fact that we have in-house expertise. Uh, our electrician has uh, completed many many. Uh, and all sorts of different varieties of conservation projects in his prior position uh, as the owner of a company. So uh, we do have a lot of uh, horsepower on site. Um, and we've also been in touch with, um, with Eversource as well, just to 
make sure we fully uh, understand the options that are available to us for incentives. Okay, does that conclude the CHP uh, boiler update? Yes. Any other questions? Move on to the next item. School solar projects update. We signed PPAs for Best and Sachs and so yes, we do have executed PPEs and we held our first planning meeting last week uh, with the installer uh, who's going back and uh, doing their preparation, designing the solar arrays and, and uh, putting a schedule together. Is, is eSchool activated? Uh, eSchool, I think the last time we were here, we reported that we had some due diligence to do uh, and complete a study just to go over the whole uh, system. We did identify some additional work we need to do and some tie downs, and that will be completed over the break uh, coming up in, uh, in a week and a half, and then uh, we should be good to go. Okay. But I could share with you some uh, statistics based on the executed agreements for solar. It's at uh, solar at the Sachs cafeteria and at the West School. And so solar right now at Sachs uh, in this project is limited just to the roof area over the cafeteria. Um, so there's a future, there's an opportunity to do a lot more roof mounted solar uh, to take the balance of the load off. But, but, but just with that little bit of solar on the cafeteria roof and the, and the CHP system we're doing, you're looking and, and, you, it, and this LED project, you're looking to cut the electric utility spend there by 50%. The combined savings between putting solar, which other than the soft cost, legal review, um, and so forth, uh, there's no money out of pocket on that, right? So the third party owns the equipment and you share the savings with them and you buy the energy it generates at a discounted rate. But so the solar we're putting on the metal roof of West School and on the Saks roof, will generate on average during the 20 year plan, about $66,000 a year on average for a savings of 1,359,000 um, for those two systems. So that, that was a pretty good, so your average combined savings on those two systems is uh, about 60, 66, $67,000 a year. All right, anything else then? <clears throat> School solar. Kevin, I just <clears throat> wasn't clear who was going to pull together the spreadsheet that was requested. We'll put that together, Stuart. Okay, great. Okay. Tiger, is, is this yours now? The uh... I guess it's mine, yeah. The uh, We'll talk for uh, everything for next year. Um, well, before we'll you talk... get to the, five, is the update, update on, on the current capital projects. Update on current capital. Um, so the work at Fieldcrest and Village is almost done. We have some driveways left to do. Curbing's been installed. Um, I suggest that everybody go take a look at it. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're working on River Street at present. Uh, we're going to have to close for the uh, for the weather. Unfortunately, plants close this uh, this coming Friday. And uh, we're going to get weather on Wednesday, Thursday. So we're going to have to close that and, and uh, come back and pave that in the spring, unfortunately. But the the base of the road is, um, well, it's non-existent. How about that? So the road was built on cobbles and uh, soil. There's absolutely no process underneath it. So we're going to have to take the road out and rebuild it. Um, so that's uh, too much grading work and too much work to be done now and then try to pave it. Uh, so we're going to put it to bed for the fall, uh, for this season and come back in the, in the spring. Um, the contractor, uh, for the Waveney parking lot, if there's nice weather, you can come in and start cutting that, uh, cutting that in and grading it out, uh, depending through the winter, if he wants, uh, West road bridge is slated to start January 4th. Um, we've put everybody on notice that that's going to come. Uh, detour will go into, into effect the moment that the that they start working. There won't be any uh, charge for winter work 
and they'll be charging calendar days while they do it. So the entire calendar will run, even though they'll be in a technically a winter shutdown period. So the town's protected on both sides and we'll be looking at a, uh, a June finish for that. The, uh, the drainage work that's supposed to happen on 123, uh, we're waiting for the state to determine when they want to start. We have a competing project now that uh, we'll be looking at whereby Eversource wasn't able to install gas lines up Main Street from East Avenue to Locust and then down Locust to service um, the Locust Forest area and 42 Forest, the development there, Silver Heights. Um, so they're going to look to do that in the spring. And the police and I have concerns over having two uh, detours of a state road at the exact same time. So we'll talk to the state about the 123 project and see if we can't push that to the summer. So we'll have just one detour going at a time. Uh, we did meet Kevin and I and uh, others with Eversource to try to help them. And uh, we're, uh, through Kevin's office, through Tucker, we're putting together a, a package for them for the Upper Elm Street, Grove Street, Pine Street area to try to help them direct them and show them exactly uh, how many businesses are interested. And hopefully we can get them to uh, expand into that area as well. Um, other than that, we're, we're just preparing for the winter. Tiger, why don't you mention the MOU with uh, Eversource as well? Mentioned, uh, excuse me, that you broke up. Uh, redoing the MOU on, on phases one, two, and three. Oh, the, uh, well, what we have, um, basically the, that MOU expires, uh, 2021, it was a three year and then they come in and they repave the roads. Um, so we're, we're looking at changing what we had, what we had originally anticipated with them, whereby, um, town takes care of town roads. Uh, yeah, we, haven't, we haven't told them this yet, but we thought right, that's fine. The, um, and then they were going to come in and anything that we had paved within the past 10 years, they would do curb to curb. And then anything that was micro, they'd micro curb to curb. Um, we're looking to change that and uh, have them come in and pave everything, um, but pave it just the, the lane that it was in. So if the, if the main was in, say, the southern lane, then we would just pave the southern lane and then have them mill and pave every uh, service. And then same thing for the micro roads. So we would bring the road back to um, close to its original condition. We wouldn't have any trenches in the way. We wouldn't have any problems. There should be a savings towards Eversource and a benefit to the town, um, whereby the micro roads would be um, there. They would be elevated, excuse me, as far as uh, their condition, and that we wouldn't have to worry about any trenching concerns since all the trenches would be uh, milled out and repaved. So instead of a curb to curb, it would be a, uh, a main line plus the services, very similar to what the state uh, does on all of their roads. State, if you're uh, inside the uh, inside the edge line, they only have you go to the edge line. If you're between the edge line and the center line, they have you go to the center line. And then um, and you only have to do one lane, so to speak. And then you have to mill out each, uh, each of the services. So the thought is to uh, do that. And there'll be a savings to every source and a benefit to the town, uh, interestingly enough. So uh, well, there'll be a savings to Eversource. The question is, how do we get a benefit to the town? What do we want for that? Well, the, the, well we get it's a twofold. I, I, I think that we, we won't be battling any trench problems, which is that's my benefit. I won't battle any trench problems going forward. So if I was going to micro over the trenches that are there, the micro is not going to work very well. So the benefit to the town itself is an increased rideability on every road. Um, and then we'd like to see an additional benefit to the town, whereby if we're saving Eversource, Somewhere on the order of five hundred thousand dollars. Like to see that reinvested in the town. That's that's the point. We'd like further expansion than the original deal was, and also just the fact that they really gypped us on the third year because of COVID. We really didn't get much uh, hookup this year beyond uh, their one twenty three project. Uh, so um, we have a further discussion with with Eversource, and the good the good thing is they're committed to. Uh, to doing further expansion. New Canada is their biggest project for expansion in the state. And, uh, but we gotta, we gotta push them. They're, they're, not, they're not a very efficient company or at least COVID, COVID has, has slowed them down. This was a, it was disappointing how, uh, 
some extent, but but I think uh, they're, they're good to work with and hopefully we can get more out of them. So while they're, before they leave and they say, well, we did our project and okay, we're, you know, we're done, so. Right, well, that's the reason for the, the look to, to expand into the Elm Grove Pine area and then down Locust. And then hopefully we can get them to go into some other areas as well. Utilize the money, that the savings to uh, put it back into the projects. Which would benefit uh, both. I mean, they've really done nothing on Elm Street downtown and Main Street um, by way of hookups. So they're, right. you know, you, you bring gas to a town, and then you, you then you don't deliver it to customers. It's kind of weird. But they, you know, they over time they will do it, but but it requires them to be in the roads constantly. Um, and they had a deal where they were going to be ready to go into the ground, and then people had three years for the Tiger to, to to do it. And if not, it was going to be a moratorium. So that has all gotten kind of off schedule. Correct. They lost an entire year on hookups this year. Uh, so we've been asking exactly what they what they can do, but they couldn't go into people's homes um, for two reasons. One, it was uh, people wouldn't want them in their house, and then second, they had a they had they they were not allowed as a company to uh, have in person meetings and things of that nature, so that they were delayed um, also. So we're we're trying to figure out exactly how to. Uh, navigate through that and make sure that everyone that wants to get hooked up gets hooked up and we get our roads paved in a timely manner okay any questions about the current capital projects just uh just uh where how's it going on the uh, replacement for the way station at the transfer station tiger uh well thank you the um everything's prepared and now we're just waiting for the unit itself being fabricated as we speak uh, was about an eight to 12 week lead time. So we're looking at sometime January, February to come in. And then uh, at that point in time, um, hook up and go. But right now the guys are, they're, they're relocated. They're in their existing house, only relocated yeah. 50 feet to the left. Yeah, depending yeah. on which one to look at it. Um, and uh, it's so far, I haven't had any complaints as to, you know, that it isn't working well. And we've gone through a couple of Saturdays already, which are our busiest days. And I can't remember, is the salt is the salt dome for next year or is that going to be this year? No, this the, year? Uh, what we what we plan on doing that that kind of segues into uh, next year's capital. But we're we're looking at we have monies um, set aside for an engineering study for the salt barn. We're, we're putting in uh, in the administration budget this year, 50 or in the highway budget, fifty thousand um, dollars towards an engineering study, which will give us a, a go, no go as far as it's concerned. The, um, there's your efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't move enough. Sorry. There's, there's your, there's your savings. The, uh, um, so, uh, that'll give us a no go on the, on the, on the salt barn and other locations. Um, since we have a capped landfill, we're a little bit, it's a little bit difficult for us to determine exactly where we can go. And then we are still looking at, um, um alternatives to the removal of the, two existing structures, the two existing incinerators. Right now, the engineering fees seem to be quite large for that, as well as the removal. So we, we are, uh, we're gonna take a pause and, and uh, look back at that again, because um, the initial read on the engineering was, was quite expensive, um, but we'll continue down that road with the overall goal to remove those structures. That is the overall goal. We'll see if it's actually economically feasible for us. Yeah, as far as, Next year's capital goes um, just in the engineering side. We have $5.6 million slated. Uh, it's down $50,000 from last year, which was 5.7 million. We have uh, our standard 2.25 million, 2.4 million from our pavement management program and $254,000 from our pavement preservation. The, uh, we have $500,000 slated for sidewalks. We're looking at trying to institute $300,000 of repair and uh, a line item for $200,000 of new installs. We have a $4 million backlog of new installations, and that's not necessarily going away. Uh, and now with the additional work at Bristow and the connection between Bristow and Mead and the expansion of this Green Link Trail, we'd like to see if we can't ex uh, extend Park Street around the corner on Old Stanford Road over to Gower. Um, and then we would be connecting every single park. So theoretically, you could walk from Irwin uh, to Waveney uh, on a sidewalk, 
which would be quite nice. Uh, excuse me. Or trail. Or trail. In that, yeah, ex I'm sorry, because if you went through Bristol, it would be through a trail. Um, but that would be the thought. Um, so we are, we are increasing that line item. We'll see if that that, uh, that will work. There's another piece of that tiger with the state grant, which we're hopefully going to get. Right. We have. Thank you, Kevin. We have a we have we have a state grant out for work on Richmond Hill and Park Street. We due to the complexity of the two, uh, we split the grant or the, split the proposal up into uh, Park Street and a Richmond Hill. Originally, they were combined at a 1.6 million dollar total. Uh, so we split them up to see if we can't get one to push quicker than the other. Uh, and we'll continue to work with West Cloud and the state on trying to bring those funds forward. The Park Street was a complete reconstruction, then plus additional segments that are currently there from 106 to 124. So it would be an entirely new sidewalk, uh, or ex excluding the areas that we've already done uh, from 106 to 124. And then Richmond Hill, we'd be looking at going from Mead Park up to Marshall Ridge across uh, the Metro North right away. That'll give that'll connect us with Marshall Ridge and areas of Weed Street down um, down Richmond Hill to the park itself, and then into town at that point. Since they can go through the expansion that we had just done, or the uh, initiatives we had done on Grove Street, uh, connecting it to connecting Grove Street to the park itself a couple of years ago. So we're hoping that those two grants come forward, and then we have a connect community connectivity grant, which has to do with pedestrian incentives um, improvements and bicycling improvements. And that basically connects our downtown with Dairy Inn's downtown and Waveney Park in the middle, uh, going primarily down uh, 124 South Avenue. That's a competitive grant. Uh, it's a points-based system. Maria did a fantastic job putting the project together, putting the application together, and hopefully um, we'll, see, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see an award from that as well. If not, it gives us a nice um, proposed plan for things if we wanted to tackle them in-house. If we weren't able to get the grant, we do have a, a nice um, kind of uh, schedule as to what we could do in-house for ourselves uh, and do some of those some of those uh, improvements itself. Uh, the only other large project that we have out is uh, the uh, bridge at Collins Pond, Bonus Ridge Bridge at Collins Pond. We had a meeting with the state whereby we went over the three alternatives uh, with them and it was uh, collectively agreed and uh, it was the town's request that we stay with alternative number one. So I was gonna have Joe walk you through that one a little bit. Um, Joe, I'll share my screen. I, I have one, Joe's having connection problems today, but the, uh, everybody see that? Oh. Yep. I put it up on the purpose and need one joke if you want me to change to something different we can certainly do that yeah no that's that's perfect thank you so um so just to go through the the overall project the bridge was built in 1957 um and it is rated poorly for the for the actual um the the deck so we're, we were given three different options to replace the bridge and two of them just being the actual um, superstructure. And we went with option number one. I think Tiger, we went through this last time, so I won't go through it in much detail, but if we could scroll to what the bridge is going to look like. Um, there we go. So as you can see, it'd be a precast um, structure. It will, look like all the other bridges in town. Um, it is going to be stone, uh, have a stone veneer on it. Um, this particular this particular option is the fastest to um, construct, which means the least amount of time of detour, uh, which is why it's attractive to us. It also keeps the elevations relatively close to the same. Um, so there's challenges with the driveways that are adjacent to the bridge. So if we went and we raised the bridge and changed a lot of the alignment, we'd run into challenges with the, the rights of way people and uh, in, in um, the taking of properties, you know, even if it was just a small amount. Um, 
so this is the this is the plan that they are going through right now. We are reusing the existing structure. Uh, the they are going to confirm that there's 50 years or better left in the existing substructure, and that it's on um, it's on a suitable sub base. And then they'll proceed with design documents um, for this option. I don't know if there's anything else Ty, you wanted to scroll through to. But you did a nice job. The uh, the only thing I was going to show was this is the extent of the project itself. The yellow is what will be repaved, and the orange is the bridge structure, and blue is Collins Pond and the waterway that goes through. There's a dam at Collins Pond at present. Uh, to give you an idea of what the existing structure looked like, you can see certain yeah. aspects of it. Um, and we're trying to keep, as Joe said, in keeping with what we have for our other bridge replacements that we've done, try to put in a stone facade and wood rail uh, to try to keep in the character of New Canaan uh, with a small town feel, trying to stay away from galvanized metal beam rail and things of that nature. But no, that's, uh, that is all we had. I don't know if anyone has a question on this or other things that we have slated uh, going forward. Penny and Dan, do we have any preview as to what the Board of Ed is going to have for projects for next year? Besides the CHP for the high school and a roof perhaps for? Dan, I'll let you take the lead on that. But you need to go unmute yourself. Dan? Where'd he go? I don't know. Dan, you're still muted. Sorry there. about that. Right. That's all right. Good. Oh. Sorry about that. It switched to the other screen. Uh, well, earlier I had, when we were talking about the, the solar, I thought the, the roof uh, came up again at the high schools. So that's one, and you've heard us talk about that. Um, we're, we're looking at the roof now. We're uh, doing a study existing conditions to really find out what the full scope would be. And uh, again, to create a schedule since it's such a large surface area, um, a lot of different roof levels. I think there's 28 different actual roof assemblies um, on that property. So, you know, it would probably be more than a one year uh, project as you can imagine. And so um, that's where we are right now. We're looking at it and trying to put, uh, you know, be able to get a good idea um, what the pricing would be. Uh, we do plan to go out to bid um, early in um, probably January, maybe at the latest uh, early February, so that we can get uh, uh, true numbers for the budgeting. Um, as Kevin mentioned, also on our budget uh, request, we'll be uh, most likely we'll be looking for a CHP at the, the high school. Um, that would be also something that um, you know we want to talk about as well. Uh, especially with the incentives that are available. So those are the two big ones um, right now. Okay, any questions about projects for next year? Anybody have any suggestions for projects for next year? Okay. Kevin, only based on the um, article I read recently, uh, there is still a notion that there might be a skating rink built in New Canaan. It's, not, it's not built, but you know, you know the, the the group who is advocating using a seasonal skating rink that it would be put up and put down like is done in Westport and uh, some other towns. They bought the equipment from the uh, Fairfield Hunt Club, and they just have to find a location that you know it comes with a chiller, which is a big a big machine that um, requires a lot of electricity. But they will uh, it won't be a you know. You could put it on a tennis court, as is done in other places. You could put it on simply a flat uh, baseball field. Um, and they're looking at various locations. Parks and Rec will make a recommendation. Um, I don't think they're going to get it done for this season, but uh, uh, but, it's, but it's not really building a structure. They're not planning on building. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, thank you, Kevin. I, I wanted to mention on 
projects for next year, we have pricing. So we have Zrex and we have pricing that came back through the RFP we did this summer for the multi-building solar uh, RFP for to solarize the Saks Parks garage, which is subject to a roof replacement. Um, we have uh, pricing that we can award contracts or at least start negotiation or at least issue a letter of intent for the, if we wanted to solar uh, power the town hall annex. And the question is, where do we put those panels? Is it a carport structure or roof mounted? And then the DPW, the uh, wastewater plant, um, if we wanted to solarize the wastewater plant, we we'll look for another place on that uh, campus to put the solar panels. And then finally, if we wanted to do anything with the recs we have secured for the at the Lapham Community Center, that would take that off the grid if we wanted to look at creating some sort of ground mount or shade structure, uh, a cover to the bleachers, for example, or as you had mentioned, something perhaps on the west side of it on the ground. Um, at the Lapham Center. So we have those buildings that we have recs and a two-way meter, that program's expiring this summer. Um, and we have pricing back through an RFP, but, but many of those are subject to getting roof replacement uh, funded. Right, and as far as, as you know, the Playhouse, um, we're gonna go into a process of trying to decide what to do with the Playhouse since we don't have an operator anymore after January, after December 31st. And um, we'll take a while to, to see what kind of opportunities are out there. Um, so we've deferred the uh, roof replacement for the Playhouse Theater. And um, into the, well, and then also, uh, so, the, so that solar project was gonna have to wait to see where we're going with that. And then also, what, uh, obviously the other big capital item we have is the police department, um, which will begin a process very shortly. I, I hope to have a meeting this week. I'm not sure we can do that with the snow coming. Um, and uh, next week is holiday week, so. Um, but uh, I think that covers it. As far as uh, so just what, where are we on Z Rex for the with the application that we put in for the high school? They've gone through three rounds of allocations, and we have not, <clears throat> we have not, um, we have not been accepted. We even went in less aggressive. We went in lower this year than we'd ever done before. And they're on fumes with those funds right now. So it's a Dutch auction for these mid-sized systems. They start with the lowest bid. They allocate to the lowest bidders first and see how much money they have left. And, uh, you know, I was bidding, we were getting 120, we were being awarded $125 per megawatt hour bids two years ago. A year ago, we were at 95. This year I applied at 90. And we have not been selected. So there, so it's unlikely we're going to get the Z-Rex for the high school at the medium size. We have we can either reapply for the final round, whatever money's left this summer, and find out next fall if we've won, but it'll be a lower amount, or we can apply for a small system, 100 kW system and do a patchwork, um, we can get, we can secure the 100 kW system uh, for sure in the next couple months. But that would be back to doing a smaller solar system on the high school, like the size of the gym extension roof, or a little bit smaller than what we're putting on the SACS Maybe just the fifth of the building. The fifth of the building. But, that is a sure thing. Those those program those recs are still available. Oh, we were not selected for the meeting. So what's the deadline for applying for a small system if we to make that decision? February. Okay. February, and then it's we'll we'll hear in about a month, but it's pro forma. If we meet the criteria, you're you're allocated it. The medium systems are uh, more of a lottery, if you will. And we'd have to wait another six months to. Uh, so, so I don't know the economics of it, but since we're going to have to do a huge amount on um, the uh, on a high school roof, and we would, I would guess that we would have enough for a medium sized system on other parts of the roof. Should we go ahead and apply for a small system? 
I mean, I'm just well, asking if, here. If you can move quickly, what you can do, like what we're doing at the DPW garage and what I've done for other buildings is um, we can apply for a small and once we interconnect it, you can apply again. So if you wanted to do two smalls, you within the context of this program that's probably got 15 months left on it, we'd have to award a small and get it commissioned and then we'll apply it again. So that would be one theory. The problem is, is if we, and that's a sure thing, we can do two smalls and that, or, or a small and a medium. But you can you can for a sure thing apply for a small in the next and secure that in the next 60 days, install that small system, and then either win a medium system this summer or not, risky, and apply and then apply for another small. So there's a little bit of a, a planning to do there. But but we could go back to at least something we'd looked at before is even if you put the small system on the roof of the gym extension at the high school, initially we were thinking that would power the Dunning Field. But when we looked at the rates, and I'd have to look again, that money was, that juice was best put back into the high school system because we were offsetting a higher electric rate than we had at the Dunning Field. And that's something that we should, you know, we should look at. So uh, Dan, on the on the roofs with the study that we're having done, are they we're getting a, a, a they looking at solar and what we can do as well in terms of a plot in terms of figuring out the schedule? Well, right, we are, part of the group that's looking at it is our structural engineer, so that's also something that we're looking at the excess capacity of each roof surface for solar. Okay. All right, so I, we're working on, we'll figure out whether or not to apply for the smaller ZREC then, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Great, thank you. You're yep. muted. Not on you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I started to say, does anybody have any thoughts or suggestions about how we might operate this committee going forward to the new year. I, th I found this useful to have a monthly uh, update and, and uh, review because we got a lot of projects going on. I guess one, one we didn't mention, uh, Tiger, was the, w the Waveney House project is, uh, is getting underway. Um, right. yeah, the contractor's meeting today, as a matter of fact, to start uh, his planning and, and um, we'll be working for the next six months there. So there's a lot going on, even through the winter. And um, but I, I, you know, I, I'd like this committee to be more than a, just a reporting committee. But you know, it's, I want to give you the opportunity to help suggest how we might make this more productive for all of us. I don't know if this is the right forum or not to, to but I've been thinking about that. And rather than each month doing kind of a broad-based everything plus the kitchen sink. Maybe we can think about adopting a more thematic kind of approach to say, okay, next month we're going to only talk about um, repaving and sidewalks, or next month we're only going to talk about coordination between board of ed and town on solar, or and 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 adopt a more topic-driven kind of meeting so we we have more time to actually dig into things. It's it's just a thought. No, that's a good suggestion, George. I, I like that. Well, you can give us a list of topics that you would like, and then we can also, you know, then we can slate that out as a schedule, and then we can plan ahead. Because, you know, some of the things you're going to look for, you know, would take us time to put together. Sure. I think it's great. I think it's a great suggestion. Then, then yes, you can delve into each, each item individually, see exactly how it's going, what the plans are going forward. Uh, yeah, part of the rationale of this committee was that <clears throat> um, to avoid the situation where projects are coming to uh, the Board of Finance and, and Town Council for approval as part of the budget process, we haven't done enough diligence and and vetting them. Um, and uh, so I'm open to thinking of other ways to format this going into, into January and February. 
Kevin, one of the thoughts I had too was um, the town still has an enormously long list of buildings that it owns uh, across a large geographic area. And I know that historically we've had uh, topics on building utilization. And I'm wondering whether that too shouldn't be a, a theme of the upcoming year. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, movie theater, uh, you know, is it, is it good utilization to bring the theater back? Uh, um, we've got Irwin and, and buildings out there that are, that are underutilized. We, we had the, um, you know, the, you, go, you go right around the town and there's a long list of buildings. And I just, you know, wonder whether it periodically isn't, wouldn't be advisable for us to go back and look at building utilization and see what we can't do to either improve or, or, or um, sell off buildings that we're, we're not using. Uh, I don't know, just, just a thought. A good suggestion. I, you know, I, I think um, there aren't that many buildings in that category, but you're, you're, you're right. I mean, the playhouse is something that we will, uh, I'm going to ask you, do people have thoughts about the playhouse? I mean, yeah, I, I think a lot of sentiment, it's good to have a movie theater in town, but we can certainly look at other opportunities to, to do active performance type things there rather than, uh, you know, now that now the, the door is open to consideration of anything. Um, and, uh, and we're going to have, you know, we're going to take several months to see what's out there. We've gotten several calls already from both movie operators as well as other people with ideas. And uh, so we can talk about that in January. I mean, you know, we're going to know more in mid-January than we do now as to what kind of options are being presented to us. And then obviously, you know, like we've, we've been sort of holding on with Irwin House thinking we, we may need it for swing space, swing space for a, a police department renovation. But at some point, we got to face up to what's, what's, what are we going to do, do with Irwin? Right. Yeah. So, so, Stuart, you you you, uh, you took the idea right out of my mouth. As I, you know, having done you know all the analysis on these buildings, I think it is really time to um, look a little bit more in depth uh, as to um, as you were saying, some of these buildings which are underutilized or um, we should be you know offloading, um, other than the swing space for possible. You know, need for the police. Um, what do we do with the the Irwin House? Because um, it's really not that great a structure. Um, so you know, maybe the recommendation is after the police <laughs> have used it that it uh, you know is is demolished. So I think we really need to you know um, take a, take a good look. What what's happening with Vine Cottage? You know, is is there still a buyer interested? Um, you know, so I think that'd be a good, good project in the, in the new year. Good, good thoughts. So anybody else? Otherwise we might adjourn here at 930 and. I still think uh, we could improve sharing information between the board of ed and the town and for the budget process coming up, we should think about that a little bit. Um, I, I don't have the specifics now, I have some ideas, but it seems like the, the communication is just not perfect. <laughs> not that, you know, I know perfect is a hard goal, but just, I just wanna keep it on the burner. I haven't figured it out yet. And I'm sure other people have, have thought about it too. Okay, yep. thank you. And that, uh, thought you have a motion to adjourn. So moved and happy holidays and a safe, healthy new year. Thank you. Thank you all. And happy holidays. Happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. Happy holidays. All the best. Happy holidays.